They will check this and they will check, check that. They will check your blood. They will check your, your pulse rate, your, your blood pressure, and the, the part of that process, they will bring that stethoscope. And they'll put it at certain areas of your chest, in the middle of your chest. And they will check, check that heartbeat. Now I have a number of doctors in our family, and one of them, Leonard Jones, in Jamaica, whenever he, one day he came for holiday, and I, he came and he, with it, he pulled out his stethoscope and he was checking everybody's uh, heartbeat and stuff. So I asked him, well, how do you know? I'm a platonic stethoscope, but what do I look for? What do I hear? What, am, what, do you, what do you hear? What do you look for as irregular and not good? He said, I mean, describe certain sounds that they're trained to listen to. And if that sound is abnormal from what they're accustomed or what they should hear, they're going to, they're going to um, refer you to a, a, a specialist. And you're going to go further with that. But let me give you some facts about the heart this morning. And the Holy Spirit will have us to get a new perspective of that organ. And I hope that uh, both spiritually and otherwise, we'll be so educated about the heart that we will, it will sensitize us to a different behavior, if you would know what I mean. Now, the human heart. How the heart functions. Every day, just to be careful, your heart beats about 100,000 times, sending 2,000 gallons of blood rushing through your body. Although it's no bigger than your fist, your heart has the mighty job of keeping blood flowing through 60,000 miles of blood vessels that feed your organs and tissues. Any damage to the heart or its valves can reduce that pumping power, forcing the heart to work harder just to keep up with the body's demand for blood. So how do we make sure a heart is in tip-top shape that it can handle that demand of work to keep the body in good health. And that helps us keep the heart a more, uh, more efficient organ. Krasowski advises, in other words, eat healthy, well-balanced meals, and don't skimp on exercise. Or it's really don't have to exercise your bike. Does anybody need a quick yet? All right, they didn't put there for that anyhow. They were just in the yard saying yesterday. But listen, folks. God will have us to be very careful if He has put us here and our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It behooves us to really take care of our body, take care of our heart. Yeah. You know, just embrace God's wisdom about all this knowledge that the Holy Spirit is having us to receive. Now let's go deep, deeply into it. The heart, what it really is. It's the special part. The hidden man. The hidden man. The soul is greatly affected by what the heart decides. I'm telling you, this heart is really, really heart. One's spirit is determined by the condition of the heart. When someone comes in your company and they have a bad spirit, it is because of what is coming out of their mouths and their actions, and that originates in the heart. Anybody with a bad spirit has a bad heart. The heart. Is the seat of affection, all affections. The seat of all affections. You may love, you may hate, you may feel sorrow, you may feel guilt, you may feel shame. All that type of feelings, they go through the hearts in so much that if certain feelings of the emotion hits the heart too hard, you may suffer physically and medically from the condition of the heart. That is why sometimes when people get tragic news, they pass out. Emotion. Seat of all affections. All you can feel. 
is affected by the heart. It is far more important than the rest of the body. Listen, you can be brain dead and live for years down the road. But as long as this heart stops, you are dead. If you pass out and the paramedics come, the very first thing they're going to check is evidence of a heartbeat, of a pulse. And if that pulse is not there, they're going to jumpstart the heart. And if they can't do that, well, that's it. The heart. Matthew 6, 26 says, But what shall it profit a man? If he gain the whole world and forfeits his soul, and you can you can use these words interchangeably, forfeits his heart. Yes, you can have all the material things in the world. You can have all the toys you want, all the nice cars, all the nice this, all the nice that. But if your heart is bad, you still need. You still are in need. You still are impoverished. As poor as poor can be. And you need help. The Bible says, what shall, it, what shall a man give in return for his soul, for his heart? What shall you give? Only Christ enables us to see its importance. Secondly, the heart needs spiritual attention. As much as we may go to a primary physician and get a checkup to know the condition of the heart. We little while had a few weeks ago, we had all our athletes who were trying out for soccer, girls and boys. We had 90 boys and about 25 girls try out for, the, uh, for soccer. And they all were told the week before, two weeks before, you cannot even try out, we'll not even take you on the field for try out if you didn't have a physical stating from your doctor that you are physically able to try out. I didn't say to play, just to try out. So the doctor had to certify that all these athletes had a physical checkup, that the pulse rate was in keeping with the beat of the heart, and that when we push them through the exercises, they were able to rise to the occasion to make that team, if they may. The same thing happens to all the sports that Orange County offer. Basketball, and track and field, and volleyball, and whatsoever it is. Same thing. The heart needs spiritual attention. In all the physical attention we can give it, spiritual attention. And this here is where people drop the ball. They would check, do all the checkup. The heart could be in marvelous condition, physically, medically, but spiritually, if it is in no condition to meet God's approval. Oh boy, when God put that stethoscope, when God puts that camera and he looks at the condition, boy, we used to sing a song. How about your heart? Is it right with God? That's the thing that counts today. Is it black by sin? Is it pure within? Should you ask Christ in to stay? Jesus often sees you as you are. Jesus really knows you for he sees inside. Yeah. How about your heart? Is it right with God? That's the thing that counts today. Yeah. That's the sound. Amen. Man, the heart. Jeremiah 17 and 9. Yes, some, listen to some things about the heart spiritually. Jeremiah writes, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, desperately sick. Who can understand it? It is generally true of the heart of every man. 
deceitful. Deceiving. It puts a cheat upon man himself. You remember what we studied about young Jacob? How he was a liar and a cheat? How he was deceitful? Yes, it was from here. He made all that plot. And we do the same thing, folks. We're in the same boat. Listen, if you're without Christ this morning, that's the condition. You cannot trust your heart. The heart is deceitful. Regardless of how a baby would born and look so beautiful, heart is bad. Spiritual. Then a child comes to the age of accountability. Where they can realize that, hey, something is need to be done to my heart. Yeah. Doctor tells me my heart is good, but God says no. Yes. You need to fix something. Because that's a deceitful heart that you have in the body there. It deceives man with respect to sin. Sometimes we think that sin is right. And it is not. That's deceitful. It proposes to man under the condition, under the notion of pleasure. The heart cries out for pleasure. Yes, enjoy this. And there's nothing wrong with pleasure. But we have to be careful that we don't take it to an extra level to our destruction. Yes. Yes. Amen. It promises us, it promises man a great deal in this life. Anytime you want something, you want something, you want something. It is the desire of the heart. It promises us a great deal in this life, but does yield, does not yield according to those promises. So sometimes you will want and want and want and you will never get. Because the heart it deceives us of self. It promises honor and power in this world. But it promotes people to, to shame and degradation. It promises liberty, but brings man to bondage. Yes. Think of people in addiction, yes. struggling. Listen, the problem of addiction in our country is a multi-billion problem. Yes. Addiction of every kind that you can imagine. And I'm, I'm not only talking about drugs and, and alcohol, I'm talking about several and numerous addictions. It's the heart. Yes. It deceives man. In the point of knowledge, it persuades man that he is very knowing and knowing person. When man is ignorant and knows not that he ought to know. For there is no true knowledge but of Christ. But of God in Christ. On to salvation. It promotes, it promises peace and security when sudden destruction comes. Yes, I'm telling you, we have no idea. We have no idea what role, important role, the heart plays in our everyday life, in every decision we make, at every move we attempt, at every thought we bring to mind, the heart. Yes. 1 Corinthians 3, 18 to 19 reads, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness, is folly with God. Galatians 6 and 3 says, If anyone thinks he's something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. That's the heart. Yes, that's the heart. Really taking us to a level of pride. Taking us up there. And it's not good spiritually. Anybody who goes up there by pride, sooner or later going to fall down. Yes. And great is going to be that fall. Yes. The heart deceives man in the concept of religion. Yes, it does. 
And so often, Satan is such a mastermind yes. right. that you make people believe that they're right there with God and they're not. Yes. He, will, he will have men to embrace religion instead of a relationship with yes. God. Yes. What a sad thing. What a bunch of the students have you on time. I'm good. I go to this church and I'm good to this church. And another one bought it and he said, I'm Catholic. <laughs> Take it as you, as you mean. Yes. yes, he was saying, that's my religion. I don't care what you say, I'm Catholic. The heart, it makes man believe that he's holy oh. and righteous. And that he's on the way to heaven. But a lot of times, it's far from that. Let me give an example. In Acts chapter 9, Saul of Tarsus, he went out persecuting Christians. He knew the law. He was very religious. He was a man who was well educated. He belonged to the Jewish council. He said he drew. Well taught, well schooled. He got an A plus for religion. But his zeal was to stamp on Christianity. Because he did not believe in the risen Christ. He believed that the, the, the book of the law was all there, there was to a relationship with God. And when people preach about Jesus in the book of Acts, he was going to either torture or kill them. And he believed that he was doing all of this in the name of God, in the name of religion. Until Jesus Christ said, uh-huh. Yes. So, no more. As much as you want, but not as long as you want. Mm. He met God, met Jesus Christ on that road to Damascus. Yes. 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 Oh, he met yeah. Jesus. And that has happened to a lot of us. Yes. When we think that we're right there, as I'm growing up as a boy, I thought that mom and dad, they were so righteous, they were so... They were so right there in serving God that they thought that their Christianity would, would just filter over to my situation. And then God would say, okay, then it's coming to heaven. Your dad and mom are good. <laughs> Till one night my dad confronted me with the word of God. He said, where would you spend eternity if the rapture took place tonight and Jesus Christ came? That looked me straight in the face and he said, listen, you can, if we had a small store, he said, you could take everything into store. You can take the car, you can take all the lands we have, you can take out anything that we have, but you'll be left behind and it would do you no good. No good. And it would be too late for you. Man, I looked outside the window and I saw the clouds changing in a kind of color. Maybe in response to what, what Dad told me. <laughs> I said, no, I don't want the rapture to happen. And I didn't go. I tell you, I fall to my knees and in tears. I ask God to pray for me and pray for me. Yes. And I asked Christ into my life that day. Yes. Man. Yes. The heart. I thought my heart was right. It wasn't. It wasn't. The heart. Is deceitful. It makes man believe he's holy. The heart of it, the, the heart of man, is deceitful. In other words, it tells you all the time that you're hypocrite. Yes, but sometimes it's so two-faced. It? Yeah, it tries to just the heart even trying to deceive God himself. But it, it cannot. God is a, a creator. Yes. He often deceives men and always himself. Peter with a sad instant, with this sad instance in Matthew, Matthew's Gospel 26, 33, 35. Listen to Peter. Peter answered Jesus. Do all though they all fall away, Lord, because of you I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you, this very night, 
before the cock crows. Yes. You will deny me three times. Yes. What? Peter said to him, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same thing. It was moments later, Peter turned around and said, I don't know the man. But the young lady said, yes, you are with Jesus. I don't know the man. The heart. Deceitful. Yes. Deceitful. The heart is deceitful to a great degree. Above all things, the Bible tells us. Above all creatures. You could name all the creatures that went to Noah's Ark and all that is on the earth today. The heart is deceitful above all the of all the creatures God has created. Picture for, for, the, for a moment some of the multiple reasons why people get incarcerated and get, get to jail. It's the heart. It's the heart. Listen. We may say that a, a, a mule, a donkey is stubborn. But let me the heart. Nothing beats the heart. Consider the last part of that verse. Desperately wicked. <laughs> Someone calls you a wicked person, you can tell him you'll be very petty. But the Bible says yes. The heart is desperately wicked. A man should never trust his own heart now and others. Everything in it is wicked. The thoughts are evil. The imagination of the thoughts are evil too. Every imagination, and that only, always, Genesis 6 and 5, the Lord saw the wickedness of man, that it was great on the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continually. The affections are unreasonable. Sometimes the heart demands some unreasonable, makes some unreasonable demands of us. Unreasonable. Maybe things are too expensive. Maybe you can avoid it. The heart says, yes, I want it. That's your inner man speaking for you. I will do all in my power to get it. The mind and the conscience are usually defiled because of the heart. The understanding darkened, so dark as to call evil good and good evil. And the will of man becomes perverse. Mm, perverted. We use that word a lot. All man of sin and wickedness is in the heart. It is a cage of every unclean bird. And the hold of every foul spirit. One moment you can be good. The other moment a person can be so nasty. Utterly nasty. The cursed generation. All sin is forged and framed in the heart. And all manner of evil comes out of it. The heart is so much about fancy and imagination, an illusion and a dream. What it gives is very temporary. You can't hold on to it because very soon it's going to fade away. It may endanger the loss of a soul. Listen, folks. The heart is directly related to the mind. When the Bible tells us to have the mind of Jesus Christ, yes. that's exactly what it means. Yes. Change your heart. Yes. Like the heart of Jesus Christ. Yes. Mind. Oh yes. Let this mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. Yes. Oh my. The mind. Our thoughts are very important. And so much that Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if he thinks wickedness, he's wicked. If he thinks good, he's good. 
If you think evil, you're evil. Yes, the heart takes us down that road several directions. Yes. Several directions. As the emotions really hit us and hit us, the heart says, hey, go there. No, go there. Go there. Yes. Several. And sometimes in the course of one day, yeah. there's seven, seven, up, seven decisions and directions may be available to us because of the heart. In a given day, imagine a week, imagine a month, imagine a year, and imagine your lifetime. Wow. Listen, folks. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees in Matthew 12, 6. For out of the abundance of the heart, the plentiness of the heart, the mouth speaks. You ever just stand aside and listen to people? Whether you be in the line at the grocery store, or you, you were in the bank, or you just walk in the street, or in the mall, and you hear different things come out of people's mouth. This man, I went home the other day for a little vacation, and I stood in marketplace, marketplace just taking in the scene, and just love to be back home again. I on my ear caught a little confusion in the back there. A young man was cursing a young lady and listen. She wanted the earth to open and take her the things she was telling her. You talk about that Man. I really have to eat the pig because I said, no, man. That's not right. Come on. I didn't know it. As we speak, we act. And when, when whatever we decide in the heart, that's sometimes often what we do. Whatever we think make, would make us happy, the will is that drive to please ourselves or to please God. So we have an option. When King David realized that he was deceived by his own heart desire by looking at that naked lady, he repented before God and he said, Lord, create in me a pure heart. He discovered that my heart is letting me down. I am king of Israel. Look what I have done. I have caused, I have committed adultery and murder. All because of my heart's desire. And I'm telling you, there are many people who are caught in that place of, of reflection today. Where they have realized that, listen. My heart has taken me down to this direction and it's bad to me. Yes. How can I rectify it? Yes. What can I do to get out of this mess? Yes. The heart. Creating me. David realized what had taken place. He said, Oh, creating me a pure heart. Some of your Bibles say a clean heart. And renew a steadfast spirit. And your Bible says right spirit within me. Yes. Listen, the, the Psalm 51 goes on and on. Where, David re, where he repented. Yes. Listen, the Holy Spirit will have us to enrich. Someone used that word somewhere this morning. And I was glad when I heard it. The Holy Spirit will have us to enrich this morning. In reach inside. Get hold of what... what Get hold of the Holy Spirit to take, yes, get hold of the heart to the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Outward usefulness begins with inward care of the own heart, your own heart, of my heart. For, the Bible says, by this my Father is glorified, that I bear much fruit, that I bear much fruit. We cannot bear fruit. We cannot demonstrate the fruit of the Holy Spirit with a bad heart. In other words, something has to be done to the heart. God has to do that transplant. Because out of that heart, if we allow that the Holy Spirit to do that work in the heart, listen to me, all that is going to come of our actions are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Listen, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. We're going to be able to love. Yeah. We're going to be able to have peace. We're going to be gentle. Yeah. We're going to be good. 
We're going to be kind. We're going to have self-control. And all that the, the scriptures uh, talk about. But we cannot do it unless the spirit takes hold of our heart. This is folks in closing. We're going to close with the scripture here. Great thing there. If the seed is healthy. Let me get If the seed is healthy. The fruit would also be healthy. If the heart is bad, the action is going to be bad. If the Holy Spirit has done a work in her heart, and it's, it's, a real, it's a real work, you can guarantee it, folks. Whatever we do is going to be good. It is going to be of the Spirit, not of me. It's of the Spirit of God. But we have to allow the Holy Spirit to take full control you sing that song, all to Jesus I surrender. Yeah. Oh, that's the heart, folks, yeah. that you surrender in. Because it's weak, yeah. it's wicked, yeah. it's ugly, yeah. it's sinful. Yeah. And we need a, a full surrender yeah. to the Holy Spirit of God yeah. to make the heart functionable yeah. spiritually and otherwise. Yeah. We're going to close with this verse. Hebrews 10, verse 22, it says, Since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, yes. in full assurance of faith, with a heart sprinkled clean, clean, clean from an evil conscience, yes. and our bodies washed with pure water. Yes. Listen, man, we don't want more than that. That's what God has to offer us this morning. Yes. You're here this morning, and you need, you're in need of a heart transplant. Don't leave here, because you're in great danger. You're in great danger. And as we sing that song, let us all stand. As we sing that song, draw me close to you. That's what we need. And we draw close to God so that He can do that work. If you really need God to do that work, we'd love to pray with you as we have the altar open as we sing that song.